Good evening. We're going to be talking tonight about Trump and his indictment and several top tens. In fact, old wives' tales, true or not true? Hi, this is Ed Locke with USA Mortgage. When it comes to buying a home, the process can be overwhelming and confusing. With so many options, it can be hard to know where to start. That's why it's important to work with a certified mortgage loan originator. I have the knowledge and expertise to guide you through the process and find the best mortgage option for you. I will work with you every step of the way to ensure that you are getting the best deal possible. So if you're looking to purchase or refinance, please reach out to me at 502-680-0953. So don't take on the stress of buying a home alone. Work with me and I will make your dream a reality. Trust the professionals and make your home buying experience a positive one. MLS ID 448908, DAS Acquisition Company, LLC, doing business as USA Mortgage, MLS ID 227262. This is not a commitment to lend. Additional terms and conditions apply. USA Mortgage is equal housing opportunity. have scoured the podcast world, you have finally found the place where news is weighed in the balance. Welcome to Newsworthy with Stephen Jerry, two words and two question marks. Jerry, hello, good sir. Hey, How are you? Steve, I'm great and getting better. Yourself? I'm excellent, man. Doing excellent. Today is Flag Day, one of my Very favorite nice. holidays. It always not, falls on this day. It's not the most popular reason this is a famous day, is it? Is it because it's National Bourbon Day? Um, that, that's another good one, but not quite number one, I don't think. Oh, what about it is the Falkland Islands Liberation oh, Day? Pretty big if you live in the Falklands for the rest know. of the world. Not so much. Oh, well, your personal favorite, then, it has to be this one. What's that? It's National International Bath Day. International Bath Day. Nothing wrong with that. I know you like your bubble baths. Yeah, Mr. Absolutely. Bubble is still your favorite. Absolutely. But there's an even bigger one out there, I think, that Ooh, we haven't mentioned. Even bigger than even that? Bigger, bigger than all those combined. I oh, oh. For those that didn't listen last week or have forgotten, it is Mr. Steve's birthday, and obviously that's a far bigger deal than all of those small, minuscule things he brought up. So, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. You're certainly welcome. I hope you had a very good day. I have. I, I, I It's been a weird day. Like, this whole week's been kind of weird. I started a new position with the, the Act, Bluegrass Action Council. Uh it's a nonprofit. It helps a lot of folks. And I've got to take a little bit bigger piece of that. And I'm really excited with it. But it's been a lot of work. Congratulations. But today, man, they went all out. They had pizza and somebody made this homemade butter. Uh, um, what is that candy that Bart Simpson always used to? Bar- butter Butterfinger. Finger. This Butterfinger. homemade Butterfinger cake. Oh, son. <laughs> I've gained probably 10 pounds a day. Very nice. They did this for your birthday? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very nice. And only been, you know, been in the office for like three days. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Pretty stoked about that. And for those that don't know, we mention this every once in a while. Steve is a very particular picky <laughs> eater. He uh, he has to really like something or he really doesn't like it and won't try. <laughs> Coming over, I yeah. decided to stop by my birthday cake and... Uh, Got to the store and realized for all the years I've known Steve, which is what thirty plus years now. Thirty plus, yeah. I don't know his. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. A, uh, I, I didn't know his favorite kind of cake. I knew that he's not a big chocolate fan, so I bought a red velvet cake. Brought it in, set it down. Said, uh, "Don't know if you like it." No, I hope you do. And he's like, "Well, my wife does," <laughs> which told me automatically that he doesn't like it but i asked him why and he couldn't remember a reason and he asked his wife and she was like i think you just i've never seen you try it you just always say you don't like it he tried it 
and he now has one additional cake that he now likes. Yeah, pretty pretty good cake. I, for some reason in my mind, red velvet. Maybe I had a bad one or something, but it always the memory that sticks when I think red velvet is. I always remember it tasting like that cherry cough syrup that parents used to buy by like the five gallon yeah. bucket. And anytime you had a sniffle, you'd drink half a gallon of it. I figured the reason was going to be what Mochi said. Red velvet is chocolate. It tends to be what? Well, that's weird. What's weird? I don't see any of that over here. I don't see any listeners on live. I don't see any of that. You need to update that. Refresh or something. But. uh yeah, red velvet is typically very dark with just red dye, and it is actually not chocolate. There's no chocolate flavor to it at all. There can be if they use a chocolate icing. Sometimes this had a cream cheese icing, and uh, yeah, you don't see mochi. I don't see anybody. She's been talking since the very beginning. Ask, hey mochi, how's the sound? Is it does it sound like it's coming through a tin can, or does it sound like it's supposed to? I'll let you know if she replies. She said, call me John Cena, is her response so far. She hasn't commented on the quality of the audio. She said, it sounds great. Okay. Well, you keep talking. I'm going to try to figure this issue we're having out because this is weird. So it uh, hopefully was a good day for you. Hopefully you had a great birthday. It has been fantastic for real. That is good to hear. Very good to hear. It says, the only thing it says over here is that you are live casting in another browser window. Finish live. So you've got. I don't know how that works. I don't either. Weird. Oh, well. Neither do I. Oh, well, let's try this. The only thing I can do is sign out completely. I didn't have a really good week. Why not? Uh, I I tried to get married this week. I tried to marry my ex-wife. What? Yeah, she turned me down. She figured out I was only after my money. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Jerry. That's very good. I like you like that one, huh? I did. Now, I don't know. In, in amongst everything that's been going on in my life the last little bit, with the new job, uh, with did you happen to see the video I put out on Facebook today? No. Oh, I never go to Facebook. Well, you got to check it out. It's cool. Um, I worked with uh, USA Mortgage, you know, our sponsor right. here, um, and did a live video um, that was just kind of a representation of me and what I what I do for my clients and stuff. Um, went on Facebook and just put on there, "Hey, I love what I do. Let's let's just share it and see what happens." Um, and over. 500 views at this point really? on that video. Done. So it's pretty cool. Pretty stoked. Very but so. so between that and real estate and my new job and the podcast and getting ready for the podcast, I actually started reading a new book in Braille. You didn't it in was, Braille. Yeah, it's a Go horror through. movie. And it was a horror book. And and frankly, I can just something bad is about to happen okay. in this book. And I'm not sure what it is, but I can just feel it. <laughs> I could see that one coming. It's the last second, but I could see that one coming. <laughs> oh, it's could glorious. Just feel it. Could just feel Very it. Very nice. Interesting. I, I still don't still know why. Have it. Yeah, I don't know even who's here today. Who's mochi here? Double here? Double, yep. Double Hi, here. Double. Hi, Mochi. I'm sorry I haven't taken your calls today, Mochi. I've been really busy. The new job. Um, like I say, it, the weirdest thing about the job for me, the new one, is my hours. Part of the reason I wanted to take it is a so I could learn and, and be in a better position to help folks, but also because it gives me the opportunity to have more standardized hours. Meaning, I can stay up till nine thirty, and I, I'm getting up at six as opposed to getting up at two thirty in the morning, yeah. three o'clock in the morning. Um, the the flip side of that is. I literally don't get off to four four thirty now, and which that's normal hours. Which is normal hours for most people, but I had been getting off at eleven thirty or twelve, and had this big gate, you know, this big gap in the middle, and I'm just trying to get through this process. 
lots of coffee and uh, <laughs> sugar at this point, but it's it's coming around. Probably another week or so, I'll be ready to go, and we'll be back to my normal old self. Hopefully so. So, Jerry, let's get into some the top ten things. You know, it's my birthday. Yes, so one of the things I've been looking at is the top 10 reasons that people realize they're getting old. <laughs> How's that sound? What are you trying to say to me, Steve? I'm trying to say you're old, but okay. So you want to get into these and you just chime in wherever you see fit. Sound good? That will work for me. So this article, just so we give out proper, uh, proper props is by Hello Sensible. The story is by Sahad Muzavar. I'm butchering the name and I apologize, but it's it's kind of funny, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to, to cover it. Daily discomfort. People who are older simply aren't as physically fit as when we're younger, and you start to realize there's a whole lot more discomfort in the world. <laughs> yeah, that certainly sounds familiar. The case of missing glasses. And let me tell you, the fact that this last week was the week that my eye doctor said the B word to me really hit home. <laughs> made you feel like a young guy, huh? Yeah. Bifocals. Ugh. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. <sighs> This didn't, one's not. Didn't so, I, okay. Dinner up one second. Sure. Wasn't it? It was either to you or on the show, and I think it was on the show a week or so ago when I told you something that I come across that's really weird. It's really weird when you figure out that you're the same age as old people. <laughs> that's true. When when I you realize that, that uh, um, when you realize that you are the people you're the age that you used to think people at that age were old. <laughs> well, I actually passed that age a long time ago. I was talking to my daughter about that recently. When you're a little kid, 20, 25 year old people seem old. When you're a teenager, it's 30, 35, 40. When you're 30, no, it, it's fifties. It's always a sliding age, right? It's always one right. or two generations above you. Right. Amazing as we continue to get older, how our definition of old continually updates. Well, here's a good example of that. Permanent injury. When you twisted your ankle in your 20s, that wasn't a big deal. You you put a wrap on it and kept on trucking. Yep. You twist an ankle now. I do it all the time when I'm mowing because we got stupid moles. You're down for half a day, and that sucks. Yep. <laughs> Impending doom. And I, this is a morbid way of putting it. I like to think of this more as um, I, I begin to think about my legacy a little bit more mm -hmm. as the older I get. What am I leaving behind? Am, am I leaving enough that I'm remembered? That you know, what I, will they remember? What will they remember about me? Was it that you know, whatever you know? Was it a great fisherman? Probably not. It was you know, it just. So that's one of the things that I think about. Um, counting calories. And listen, I'm not, and until I'm in a situation that I have to be counting calories, I'm not going to do it. Because here's, here's, the, here's the fine line. Now, if you're in a situation where you're diabetic and you have to very seriously watch what you eat. I don't have to count calories. I have to count. Carbs, carbs and sugars. sugars right until you get to that point and when you do you need to take good care of yourself mm -hmm. absolutely because diabetes is no joke it will ravage your disease. bodies yes, it will. um but until you get to that point as long as you're in moderation for the most point you should be okay yep. and that number switches about 50 or so 45 50 where you have to really kind of watch what you eat, make sure you're putting good in so you get good out. But if I make it to 85, Twinkies, beware, because I'm going to eat what I want, when I want, and as much of it as I want. Yeah. I've earned it. <laughs> and we've discussed, we uh, 
probably not at the age of 80, 85, but if we ever get a terminal diagnosis, absolutely, we very well may pick up smoking again. Every absolutely. Once in a while. Absolutely. Once in a I know while. I will. I was at the counter yesterday and, you know, the, the urges that I get, I've been, you know, I've been done for almost 15 years at this point. And the urges I get are nowhere near as strong as they used to be or as frequent. But I was sitting there and I was looking over all the cigarette packs that they had there, you know, behind the counter. And they didn't have what I used to smoke. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if they even still sell that or if they even still make it. But <laughs> it was just weird. Did you happen to notice any of the prices? Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? Six dollars oh, for I a think freaking pair of a lot of them are like seven, seven fifty. Well, I just was for one pack bottom of shit. That's crazy to me. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember when I was nineteen or twenty years old, I was at a Super America on Alumni Drive in Lexington. Uh had just gotten out of class and was headed home and gonna change clothes and go to work. And I stopped at a Super America and asked for a pack of cigarettes. And the total was a little over a dollar. With taxes, it was a dollar two, dollar yeah. three. And I remember just being dumbstruck and thinking, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm not gonna make a scene. I'm gonna pay your stupid high price, but never again in my life will I pay a dollar a pack. <laughs> yeah, it was uh four or four fifty a pack by the time I quit. quit. That was three or four years ago. Gosh. Yeah. Here's the one that I think that most young people don't believe when us older folks tell them. And I, it blows me away, especially younger parents, when I tell them, don't blink because it's going to be tomorrow. You're going to wake up and they're grown, your, your kids. Yeah. Um, you're going to blink twice and you're going to be an empty nester. Um, and to me, that is just $64 a carton. She said some are 108. Holy double just buckets. $100 a carton of cigarettes. No oh, that's way. $10 a pack. But that's the one thing that I think most younger people just don't get. And I didn't get when I was young. I thought that it just took for now Christmas looks like every Christmas just to blink away. I mean, it's just so fast. Every year gets faster. I saw a, uh, a saying years ago meant for young parents with very young children at home when they're, you know, up three, four, five times a night screaming and no one in the house is sleeping. And it said when they are little, the nights are so long. When they are little, the nights are so long, but quickly the years are so short. Right. It's and it's so way true. It's yeah. a good way of putting it. Yeah. Here's the one that I like. And this is the one that I'm going to start wrapping around myself. Gonna Unfors- your what? Going to become your mantra? Yeah. Unforeseen joy. Old age, and I'm just going to quote it the way it's written here because it's put in, put in very, it has been put very well. Unforeseen joy. Not all is lost. Old age can bring a delight for some. Someone points out that they were unprepared for growing for for the joy that growing old bl- brings. Good gravy! I can't read tonight. Many, however, are the happiest they've ever been. After all, you never stop learning and figuring out what's best for you. I just think that that's a wonderful way of putting. It, to be honest. Yep, it sure is. So that that is my top ten list for getting old. <laughs> yeah i still say it was really weird when i figured out i was the same age as old people yeah or now this has happened to me within the last two years okay um okay so it, here in lexington and the surrounding area 100.1 is wkqq right classic rock right i never that's liked- one one yeah, one hundred. Yeah, they've ch- it's changed. Okay, it's one hundred point one WKQQ. Used to be back to this in my radio was one hundred point one WKQ. No, I can't do it. My voice is dry. But anyway, so I never liked classic rock, even when I was young. And classic rock really? was cool. Yeah, I was, bleh, that sucks. What did you listen to then? 
Oh, I grew up in the 90s, dude. We had the best music ever. Classic rock. No. What'd you listen to? Everything. Everything in the Not 90s was rock. good, except classic rock. So what did you listen to? <sighs> Rap, R&B, hip hop, yeah. Motown, lots of good yeah. music. Country music was good back then. Shoot. We had the best music in the 90s. Yeah, it was called rock. No, now we have classic rock. And now classic rock is amazing. Like, here's the weird thing. And God rest, one of them have already passed, and it sucks. I have found an absolute new love and appreciation for ZZ Top. Like, how did you always love them? No, I didn't. And now I'm like, whoa, why did I not like these guys? I saw them in concert in Rupp Arena around 84, 85, 86, somewhere around there. Great show. Mm. Not as good as ACDC. You know what I was doing in 86? That was an awesome concert. But I was just learning how to mow my yard in 86. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. I was 20. You were 10. Somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. So, Jerry, tell us. I know that you're going to. We're, we're going to try to wedge your topic in between a couple here. So, let's go ahead and get in there. Uh, what are we you, trying to wedge it in between? Some good stuff. Like getting old, like, getting old, and something. Getting old is good. I think it is. I mean, it's more positive than this. Here, here it is. That. Well, it is more positive. And here's the second part of it. The one thing I'm not is someone who is frightened, and, and this comes out of my belief and, and my my spiritual beliefs. I'm not frightened by the prospect of death. I do believe there's a better life out there. The, you know, now, as Kenny Chesney says, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to go today. But so I'm okay with the getting older. Now, do I want to look older and be older? And 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 I've been very blessed to this issues. point. Huh? And have the health issues. Right. No, person. nobody does. But I'm also not stupid. And I realize that that part of life doesn't have to be miserable. And attitude has a lot to do with how you accept that. I agree. So I'm going in it with open arms. We're going to make it happen. We're going to love it and use every day that we're blessed here to do, to do, try to do good for somebody. So anyhow. it really is. And, you know, most of life really is a matter of attitude. Absolutely. It's the way you approach it, it's the way you look at it. It's not a matter of was I dealt a good hand or a bad one. It, it's a matter of how do I what's that old saying? To deal with it? Uh, life is ten percent what happens yeah. to us and ninety percent how we react to it. Absolutely. Absolutely believe that. Sure is. Cat just scared <laughs> the piss out of itself, didn't it? <laughs> good because she knows you ain't supposed to be in here. <laughs> Nasty. So my Sad, depressing topic. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's get in there. Trump, as I'm sure everyone has heard, was indicted yesterday on 37 federal charges in Miami at a, at a Miami federal courthouse. Just a couple of months ago in April, he became the first former president to ever be indicted on state crimes. And now he also holds the distinction of being the first former president to be indicted for federal crimes. Each one of those 37 charges carries a maximum fine of $250,000 with a maximum sentence between five and 20 years. So you do the math. It's you know, the, the sad part. I, I, it's people who listen to the show know I'm not a big Trump fan. And actually, when I mentioned this to you that I was going to be covering this, your first comment was, I'm sure you're happy. And it's the exact opposite. I'm not a Trump fan, but I am a fan of the United States. I am a very big fan of uh, having respect for the highest office in the land, and that is the president of the United States. And it is an absolute sad, depressing, disgraceful thing to have a former president be charged with state and now federal crimes. One of the really most terrible things about this is when I looked into it a little bit and I realized that the government has a ton of evidence an absolute ton of evidence. And the reason that's terrible is there's a very good chance that he gets convicted. That's terrible because at his age, this could be a terminal sentence. He could die in prison. Now, I don't think there's that 
huge of a possibility because he is a former president. I think if Biden won, he would probably pardon him. Ron DeSantis has already said that there's a very good chance he would pardon him. We all know if Trump wins, he would absolutely 100% pardon himself. That might run into some problem with the court system. It's never been done before, and then it would go eventually to the Supreme Court. But I, I do think that there's a very good chance uh, that he doesn't go to prison. But if he were to, at his age again, there's a great chance that it could be a terminal sentence. That's sad and depressing. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care what side you're on. I don't care what you think he's done. The fact that an American president could live out the rest of his life in prison is very sad. It is. It is indeed. I, I went back and looked at our show from August the 31st of last year, which was when we covered the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago, which you referred to at the time as the what? The raid. The FBI raid of Mar-a-Lago. Absolutely. We still spent, believe that. We spent most of that episode arguing whether it was a raid or a search. Which it was a raid. I'm and glad we got to the end of that. <laughs> it was realized it was a raid. But, uh, here are a few of the notes that I looked at that I realized that, that even with all the evidence and everything that the government has on Trump and it's a long list of evidence they have, some of the original things that we knew in August of last year are still the biggest. It's the fact that shortly after Trump left office, the the uh, National Archives and Records Administration noticed that there were several items that were missing that he hadn't turned over. And it's their job to collect those and make sure that they're preserved. Um, for instance, the letter that President Barack Obama left in his top right-hand desk drawer, I believe it is, um, that every president leaves for their successor wasn't there. Trump had now, taken it. Why, why do you... I'm obviously not the president, never had been elected. Why do you think that's not their personal property? I mean, is there a cha- is that a is that a precedent? Is that an actual no, no, law? No. Well, it's here. Here's the way it's viewed. That they ask one question: If you were not the president of the United States, would this have been given to you? Would you have received this? Because if it happened because you're the president, then it belongs to the office, not okay. to you personally. I'm just curious. That's you're why president for four years. If you're reelected, eight years. But th- the point is: Were you given this? Is the letter from his predecessor? Obviously, there's no way that Barack Obama would have written a letter welcoming Trump if he hadn't been elected president. So that belongs to the presidency. Those records are preserved. Uh, the other thing they noticed very quickly was, as Trump called them, the love letters from North Korean dictator Kim Jong Un. He took those. Again, he would not have received, he would not have been corresponding with Kim Jong-un if he wasn't president. The only re- reason he received those was because he was president. Therefore, it belongs to the office. So anyway, to make a long story short, they, the National Archives and Records Administration, uh, requested those and any other documents that he had with him and gave him a list of what he should not have taken and classified national security documents were certainly the top of that list. And in January of that year, he did give them a few boxes. They quickly found out that there was several other things missing that they knew about. They asked him for them. They, their attorneys were in correspondence. A few months later in May, they obtained a federal grand jury subpoena. And that's when it first became public. They can't keep that silent at that point. And that's when we first found out that Trump was trying to keep certain things, and he didn't want to turn it over, and he'd already been given several months. On uh, uh, Shortly after, I think it was late May or very early June, they got a few more boxes from Trump. And in June of 2022, Trump had his attorney sent a notarized statement to the Department of Justice saying, we have searched, there, we have no more, we have nothing else here. We, we have n- nothing that needs to be turned over and submitted. Uh, at which point someone in Trump's team, for whatever reason, maybe they wanted to cover their tracks and make sure they weren't charged. They actually took some pictures and sent the government and said, here's pictures of some of the stuff he's got, and here's exactly where it's located. They subsequently, on August 31st, searched, or as Steve's like to say, raided mar lago and left with more than 100 additional classified documents. Now, 
many people are saying, why isn't Joe Biden facing the same charges? He, a few months ago, admitted that he had some classified documents. And as far as that goes, Mike Pence, Trump's vice president, did the same. He went to the government and, say, and said, I've found classified information that I have in my personal residence and I need to turn it back in. The difference is Biden and Mike Pence went to the government and said, we found this. We need to get it back in secure hands. What's the best way to do that? And did turn it over. In Trump's case, he was notified and he refused to turn it over. In a period of months, several months, after being asked repeated times, after being served with a subpoena, after being having part of his property searched, he rated. still re- rated. He still <laughs> refused to turn it over. You want to know the difference? In one case, Pence and Biden voluntarily went to the government and said, "We've got this. We shouldn't have it. It's yours. Here you go. It's, gotcha. it's yours back." The problem with Trump is they're not using testimony from his enemies. They're not using information from other people. They have a ton of information, audio information, audio recordings, video recordings. And uh, Trump was being interviewed by a couple of journalists for a book uh, concerning his chief of staff, Mark Meadows. And when they were talking to Trump, Trump gets out some of the, and this, by the way, was in July of 2021. He gets out some of these classified documents and begins to show it to him. And he said, in one case, wait a minute, let's see here. Look what I just found. Isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know, except it's like highly confidential, secret. This is secret information. Look, look at this. He's sitting here showing information that he says is classified. He later, you know, has claimed that he declassified everything. He was telling these gentlemen it, it's not. He was telling these gentlemen it is classified. And one of them was recording the interviews. That That's pretty typical, right? When you're Crazy. interviewing someone, just to make sure you don't, you know, you don't miss something in your notes, you record the interview. Trump knew he was being interviewed. Trump agreed to be interviewed. The government has these records. They don't need, they don't have to prove that this stuff wasn't, that Trump didn't declassify. They've got him on tape admitting it. They've got Trump on video surveillance from Mar-a-Lago with him and his personal valet moving boxes of information from the storage area to his private residence a few hours before the attorneys were told to go search it and then signed documents certifying that there was nothing else there. Trump's in trouble. The weird part is that Trump supporters, um, this hasn't affected their support pretty much at all. The majority. Well, it has. 37% is the number that remain unaffected, according to a Fox News poll. That's well, Fox. I heard but- that 66% were unaffected. Thirty-seven well, percent among registered voters, largely unchanged from the group's previous polls. Oh, the poll was connected. Not, not thirty-seven percent of his supporters. Thirty-seven percent of all voters. Correct. Yes. Correct. Um, also, since the indictment came down, six point five million dollars have been raised for the Trump campaign. Um, sounds like we're getting ready to go to a, just a nasty, nasty. It's not going to be that nasty. You don't think so? There's too much evidence against No, no. Him. What I'm saying is if if all things are out there, excuse me, all things are out there, when we get to the primary debates, it's going to be a nasty debate. Maybe. Well, I, there's no maybe to it because if Chris Christie's on the debate stage, I've told you my 100% well, belief, he, he'll get nasty Chris Christie it. is there to finish Donald Trump. He'll get nasty <laughs> with it, and I think Ron DeSantis probably will. Yeah, probably so will. So far, he's kind of tried to hold himself above the fray and not get into it a lot with Trump. But Trump has done and said enough directly to DeSantis that, and, and with this, if you're running against Donald Trump and this is in your lap, why yeah, wouldn't you use it? Absolutely. Um, so you are a very learned person, Terry, and I'm not going to steal your thunder I here. Say that. No, no, about politics and, and, and everything that's going on and the candidates and the people. 
do you know who Perry Johnson is? Yes, I do. <laughs> you are probably the 0.5% of I don't know, I don't know a lot about him, but I, yeah, yeah, I know about him. Um, I, I officially donated to the Perry Johnson campaign today. And what made you decide to <laughs> donate to the Perry Johnson? Because I believe in a, a, a showing of ideas. So, and what I mean by that, and for the first Republican debate, um, to get on the debate stage, you have to have a polling number of at least 1%, and you have to have 40,000 individual donors. That's not that. Not that big of a deal. Hard to meet for both, I would think. Right. 1%? 1% and 40,000 40, individual would donors. You, when you stop and think about it, throughout the United States, you know? 4,370 million? Everybody. Yeah. It's if you can't get that many, you're not a serious viable candidate. <laughs> wow. Apparently I remind double of Socrates. Okay. Because of this big brain I got here. Yeah. Can you see it? It's like oozing I see the out bigness. of my ears. What? I see the bigness. <laughs> <laughs> big head. <laughs> so anyway, I uh I donated because Perry Johnson on Facebook was running a pretty ingenious campaign to make this happen, right? He's kind of known out there. He's going to get, but listen to this 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 project that he's got going on to get to the debate stage. Okay. Donate one dollar to his campaign. Um, and they send you a free non-bidenary t-shirt. <laughs> non-bidenary? Bidenary. Get it? I get it. But here's the thing. Yeah, it's a cute t-shirt. But how does that grow your representation? It doesn't say powered by the Perry Johnson campaign. It just says non-binary. The only point is for a dollar and no shipping, you get a free t-shirt. <laughs> Basically, well, not free, but a dollar t-shirt. <laughs> Pretty darn ingenious. In retail, we'd call that a what, Jerry? Loss leader. Yeah. <laughs> Have you read his book? Who, Perry Johnson? Yeah. I have not. Two cents to save America. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. He was talking about two cents. And the, the one thing and the one reason I didn't mind giving a buck, I'd actually donated five. I felt like if I'm getting a T-shirt, <laughs> I at least you give five bucks. I could throw it on and wear it as an undershirt if nothing else. But um, I want to hear his idea. He's He's one of the few candidates that is just out there saying, our national debt is the number one issue affecting America today. Period. Hands down. No issue about it. Kind of like Ron Paul of today's day and age. <coughs> totally agree. And in the primary, additional up to a certain point. Last year, was it Republicans, I think, had 17 candidates for oh, president? Yeah. That's true. Absolutely. Many. That's too many. But. You know what? It should be more than one or two. It should be more than DeSantis and Trump. Well, we also have Nikki Haley. But uh, I agree. By the way, his uh, two cents, his book. You want to explain to the people what that's from, what that's about? Um, well, several years ago, Sean Hannity and a, a group, a conglomerate, if you will, had an idea of the penny plan. Everybody cuts one penny out of every dollar spent in America. Not in America. Discretionary in, in spending. Discretionary spending in government. You cut every dollar by one penny and over a course of X number of years would pay down the national debt. Now it's grown to two pennies because we're at $31 trillion. But um, I'd like to see just more details about it. I would like to see how that's affected and how that's put into play. And, more importantly, I want to see the big candidates have to answer those questions. What's your idea? You don't like this idea. You're sitting here poo-pooing this guy. What's your idea about the federal deficit? What are your plans? Right. Of what do what you do feel you about it? Do you think it's a problem or no? So, yep. anyway, that's my thought. While you were talking about that, I Googled him trying to find the link because I was going to donate. And it's not on PerryJohnson.com. There's a donate It's Redwind. Redwind.com? Yeah. Well, also, uh, for those listening, if you wish to be a part and to help him appear on the debate stage, we'll certainly give you a link. Or just get you a dollar t-shirt. 
which will get you a dollar t-shirt. Yeah. A non-binary t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just... No, no. Cut uh, me off about what? What was I talking about? Trump's indictment. Oh. Are you done? I think it's pretty well done. Okay. Oh. That, guys, that's a very sad, depressing topic, mainly because the government has a ton of evidence, mainly because Trump's an idiot and goes out and brags about everything and won't keep his mouth closed. Steve and I said many times early on in Trump's presidency, if that man would have let his policies do the talking and had kept his mouth shut, he would have probably went down. He's one of the greatest no impeachments. of all time. I don't know about the greatest of all time, no. but he would have been a popular president. He would not have probably been impeached, but he just couldn't keep from sticking his foot in his mouth, and he continues to do it today. Yeah. And so, that's the reason for the biggest, the majority of the evidence they have against him is himself. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, you know, every week as, as we're getting closer and closer, I've been trying to keep folks up and in, in, in the know as far as new presidential candidates. We have another new one this week. All right. Who's that? Miami Mayor Francis Chorez. Uh, oh, yeah. There's your candidate. Uh, well, he's got some pretty big backers, to be honest. Uh, Kellyanne Conway actually told Donald Trump that he would make an excellent vice president okay. pick. Um, and uh, he has gone straight in attacking DeSantis and Trump as the other two Florida candidates. Now, this guy... If you've not seen a picture of him, he's 45, good-looking fella, young, looks young. Um, I'm not running. <laughs> yeah. I was getting ready to say, not a hair out of place. Uh, again, that could be you, Jerry, I guess. Um, no hairs to be out of place. But this guy's known as a tough on crime guy. He's, he's um, I don't, I've been to Miami. I don't remember it being anything i mean it was awesome because miami's awesome but it wasn't like ooh, look how <laughs> so but to be honest unless you know a lot more about miami than myself right. if he did make major changes would we see them would nope. we know they've been made? probably not i wouldn't but again he is has he has to meet the same criteria as our guy Mr. Perry Johnson 40,000 unique donors and a poll at least 1% in three national polls and or one early state poll and two national polls. So he's got a long hard road to go but he is backed by a super PAC called SOS America and they're hailing him as the tough on crime politician. And they plan on spending six figures in states, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada. So there you go. One more new candidate running for the Republican nomination. Earlier this evening, you and I mentioned that uh, in light of the indictments on Trump, the best thing we could hope for would be for neither Trump nor Biden to win their party's nomination. Absolutely. Who do you see as the strongest contender on both sides at this point? Um, well, Republic, Democrats is the, is the dark horse. I mean, you like Mike Warner a lot. But he's uh, not running. That but I he's think. not running. Uh, we both like Joe Manchin. He's not running. <laughs> Joe Manchin is the hands-down favorite if he were to. And I think if something happens to Biden, Manchin is already primed and ready to go. I think he would jump in in a heartbeat. But he's not said or done much no. to indicate that that's serious on his list. It, it's, it, well, he doesn't, it's not a question of what he has done to me. It's a question of just listening to him speak and how he speaks. He's very middle of the road. He doesn't, he doesn't stray off to the left too far, even if he believes sometimes what's on the left. Um, I think he's, he's he got him set up. Hands down, you and I both believe that Kamala Harris, who didn't get not one vote in her in her election campaign, would be the hands down favorite. Uh, there are polls that show sixty to seventy percent of Democrats wouldn't be opposed. Tell, tell people what you mean when you say she didn't get one vote. She, she didn't dropped, get votes. She, she dropped out of the campaign before she her, didn't win any state. So she, she didn't get states. any electoral votes right, right. from that stand. But there were some people that didn't vote for her. So I think that Manchin uh, is bad, regardless of how we feel about it. I think Gavin Newsom is is a name that would be floated. You got to bring up. You got to. 
go to the trash can and you got to pull Hillary back out of it for a minute. I mean, we're talking a catastrophic something would have to happen for the Democrats to not vote Did you mention for Joe Biden. Miss Harris herself, the VP? Yeah, I don't think that's a chance. I don't either. I really don't. Not even I've a heard chance. you talk about it before that you think the Democratic Party wants her. I don't really see huh. anyone saying they want her. No, she's she's <laughs> she's something. She, but she on the Republican side to, to impress anyone. I think that uh, I think if if Trump is removed from the situation, I think DeSantis is the man to beat. I think so. Maybe. Yeah, I do. Uh, Maybe. Mike Pence for a lot. I think I it becomes between Pence and, and DeSantis. And I know that vice presidents don't win elections, but I think it would really come down to who their VP picks were, to be honest. All right. Pence is boring. I, I like Nikki Haley. I think she generates a lot more enthusiasm than Mike Pence. Yeah, I don't like Nikki. And I'm betting that she. I used, to, I used to like her. What she do? She, she's speaking very much like a politician. Which Sorry. one of them is it? Pence, other than Pence. Pence, I think, is more honest and more truthful about how he feels. He never misleads you. I don't think he really gives a crap about what you want him to say. He's going to tell it like he thinks it is. Yeah. But I. Yeah, the rest of them, they're all the same. I kind of like Nikki. Yeah, I agree with Mochi on this. One thing I'd like to see in the next presidential election is people not pointing fingers at Dems or Republicans, but to show us actually what you are going to do to do to fix something. We'd all like Even to if we that. disagree that that something is broken, what's your plan? What's your goals? What are you doing? Rand Paul used to be really good at that. Oh, and yeah. He's become too much of a politician in the last year or two. All right, Jerry, are you ready for some more fun stuff? I am ready. Let's talk about 15 ridiculous myths that people still believe. Sure. This is an article by Guide to Free. It was written by Michelle Holler um, or Harlar. That's, that's a Harlar. weird. It's a hard name to say. H A R L E R. It's kind Harlar. of a, it's a hard, <laughs> it's a hard. I mean, parlor. Yeah, yeah that's Harlar. a hard word to say Harlar. for me. So let's just talk about a few of these. Truth or false? Cracking your knuckles makes your hands useless over time. Well, what I heard when I was young was that it was going to give you arthritis. Uh, I do know that, as far as I know, I don't have arthritis. I probably am in the beginning stages. My hands now, if I don't try to straighten them and just relax them, here's yeah. very bent. Now, I can still straighten them without pain, so I'm not arthritic. I'd have to say that they're, what? I would have to say. <laughs> can't believe you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Reason number 101, we're not going to have video. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Joke, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but anyway, I was told. I'm pretty Hung in this chair. <laughs> I was told when I was young that it was going to cause arthritis. Well, it doesn't. Uh, any of that? <laughs> Nothing. None. It has no actual negative effects on your body whatsoever. <laughs> and that's been done by into, hundreds of studies. You're going to get into what, when you're young, what they tell you that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just one. Just and one. reason number one million and six we're not having video, Jerry Burnett. <laughs> Okay. Oh, man. What's next on the list? The myth that in your sleep, you eat spiders because they simply crawl in your mouth and don't come out. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. It makes sense, right? It could happen. It does. I'm sure it doesn't very rarely, but it could happen. It, it is incredibly slim. Spiders hate humans. Now, my son, the other night, I had one pop down on his head. But we figured it probably fell from the ceiling and landed on his head. It wasn't just crawling around there. But yep. uh, they they just don't like us. They don't like our smell, the heat we give off. They don't like anything about us. So it, it, although the chance is there, it is minute. So we've all heard this. And I actually said this the other day and was corrected. I didn't know this. What's that? The whole thing that... 
you get thicker hair if you shave. I told my son this. If you shave that beard. little scrag on your chin off, it'd come back bigger. I heard that all my life. I didn't believe that when I was young. It actually, shaving doesn't do anything to your hair follicles at all. It doesn't yeah. stimulate them. It doesn't make them grow. Um, if that were the case, people who had no hair on their head and shaved their head would start growing hair again, right? <laughs> oh, man. All right. So here's the big one. Here's a big one. Ever since I was little, we used to get these little packs of Joe Bazooka bubble gum. You know what I'm talking about? Came sure. with a little, little, you get them for like two for a nickel, something like that. Yeah. Was always told religiously by everyone in my family, you make sure you spit that out. You swallow it, it'll stay in your gut, your body forever. Don't think I heard that one. Yeah. Well, it doesn't. It passes through just like everything else in your body. <laughs> Okay, now this one affects you directly, Jerry. Are you ready? I'm ready. Is it true that humans with our big, huge brains only use 10% of our brain? Um, I'm guessing yes, true. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to tell me no because that's an old wives tale. It is an old wives tale. And in reality, while though not all of our brain regions are active at all times, all of the studies show that every part of our brain during the day gets some sort of a workout. We use all of our brain. I don't think they say what I remember hearing is potential, only using certain percent of your brain's potential. I don't even know how you'd go about testing. That. How would you measure potential? Exactly. You know? That one's stupid. We're not even going to cover that one. We all know that's false. So, I personally still believe this one. I don't care what this paper says. Are you ready? I'm ready. Black cats are evil and bring bad luck. Tell the truth. You believe all cats are evil and bring bad luck. Even though we have pictures to prove you love them. We got pictures of Reason you lying in your sleep. Reason number seven million four hundred and twenty-three that we're not having video. <laughs> yep, black cats are just like every other cat. They don't have any more evil powers than the rest of the cats do. And how would they prove that? <laughs> how are they measuring evil nowadays? Uh, well, they have an evil meter. Have you okay. not watched Ghostbusters? Batman, yeah, Constantine, Batman. anything? Okay. Stand corrected. So, in your body, before it reaches oxygen, what color is your blood? Before it reaches before oxygen? Before it's exposed into the world, what color is your blood? Um, red. <laughs> Correct! There's an old think. wives' tale that before blood is expelled with a cut that it is blue inside your body. Never heard that. You've never heard that? Never. I heard that my whole life. Because what happens is if you hold your arm and you see your veins, it has a blue tint to it. That's, That's a bunch of friggin' <laughs> Democrats trying to get <laughs> think blue. All right. So this one affects us very, very much. Okay. So MSG. Monosodium glutamate. glutamate is not harmful. Has been long held as a terrible, terrible thing. It's MSG. Quite a while they're saying it's not harmful. It's not. It, it's no more harmful than salt or sugar. And it is a great flavor enhancer. It sure is, boy. It can pull the flavor right out of some meat. Vegetables, too. Okay. This is a big one. This is actually one we're going to do a entire podcast on one day. Are you it's ready? Good. I'm ready. Um, there are some people that believe that our landing on the moon was filmed by Stanley, uh, uh, Kubiak, and it was done in a Hollywood basement somewhere. Those are called flat earthers. <laughs> They're also known as people... I'd like to go down rabbit holes. No, I, I go down a rabbit hole. 
I go down rabbit holes, but I absolutely believe we we landed on the moon. So and the Earth is flat. You believe that one as well? No. Okay, just making sure. Good gravy. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes some of these rabbit holes you do go down. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> By the way, where you're looking up your next one. Yeah. Politico.com goes through the Republican GOP candidates. They've got Trump one, DeSantis two. Who do you think would be? Well, we talked about Pence. We talked about Nikki Haley. Those are three and four. Take a wild guess who number five would be after Trump, DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Mike Pence. Who do you think they might have next? Chris Christie. They have someone that I don't think you and I have mentioned. Oh, Vivek. Tim Scott. Really? Really. No. Tim Scott? Tim I mean, Scott. Darn, they sure do, don't they? Number five. No Tim way. Tim Scott. I think you definitely put Vivek ahead of Tim Scott. 100%. I didn't even put Christy ahead of yeah. Tim Scott. I would have thought. Now, it's not like I've done research. Vivek is next. He's six. Yeah. According okay. to them. All right. So real quick, we're almost out of time, Jerry. Okay. Um, one more thing I've got to go sure. over before we get off. But Please you, do. You, go ahead. You don't have something? No, go ahead. A minute ago, you talked about something that we were going to do a show on. I want to tell people something we're not going to do a show on. Uh, several months ago, you mentioned that there was, you and I disagreed on something. And you said that you were going to do some research and bring it back up <laughs> the following week and give your side of it. And it went on for a few months. And two weeks ago, I re-brought it back up. And you said you promised once again that you're going to do some research and tell people. So at this point, I'm saying we just, I think it's safe to say that we're never going to do that. And that's the, uh, you producing evidence on how TikTok is dangerous. <sighs> and, and unless I'm mistaken and, and you were prepared to give us that evidence now. <sighs> You are not following Mike's rules today. I'm just saying. Hey, I'm trying to give you a chance and opportunity <laughs> to cover something you promised you would. Uh-huh. 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 Well, I oh, have well. not to this point produced evidence that well, we TikTok that. is dangerous. However, <laughs> however, I have not given up <laughs> the opportunity. So while you continue to transmit all your fun things to China, <laughs> I will continue not to have it on my phone until I get the proof. I would be willing to bet you're transmitting far more information than I am because I'm a little more wary and, and tend to not, I tend to look at things like app permissions more than you do. That's because you're a nerd. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> very much so. And you, I don't think it's that you don't know how. I don't think it's that you don't care. You just don't have the time to be bothered with those things. So you just screw it. I just don't do social media that way, I guess. Well, you do social media a lot more than I do. Well, I do, but it's in a, if Ch the China really wants to see how I sell houses, by all means. <laughs> and that's the way I look at 99% of America. And for the other 1%, TikTok's not your problem. Yeah. If the people don't themselves, that one percent that is that China is interested in, if they don't realize that China's interested and they're not extremely careful with Facebook, Instagram, and Everything. every other social yeah. media, there's huge problems. Yeah. So it's not just TikTok. That's my whole point. Is TikTok potentially dangerous? Every single one of them are. Well, what else you got tonight, Jerry? I think we've covered it. Man, I'm telling you what, this has been a good show. I just want to say thank you to Georgia. Um, Georgia oh, yeah. last week, man, they, I, I don't know what happened in Georgia. We had a revival of yes, uh, epic proportions in Georgia. And we just want to thank all of our listeners in Georgia. We want you to continue listening. And peach season's coming. So I'm going to get some. Yeah, absolutely. Spread the word. Let's hear from Ed Locke real quick, shall we? Let's do that. Hi, this is Ed Locke with USA Mortgage. Buying your first home can be overwhelming, but here are five tips to make the process go smoother. Number one, find a lender. Me, Ed, be approved. There are multiple options available based on your situation. Number two, 
work with a real estate agent you can trust. Number three, don't rush the process. Take your time and know that the process could take some time. Cost. Number five, get a home inspection and review it with your realtor. Keep these tips in mind, budget for yourself, and you'll be that much closer to making your dream of homeownership a reality. So reach out to me at 502-680-0953. NMLS ID 448-908, DAS Acquisition Company, LLC, doing business as USA Mortgage, NMLS ID 227262. This is not a commitment to lend. Additional terms and conditions apply. USA Mortgage is an equal housing opportunity. Boy, that's a good dude. <laughs> yes, he is. He's a good dude. I like working with him. Guys, we appreciate everything. Uh, we haven't told him how to reach out to us, Jerry. Well, they have a couple of ways. One is uh, via email. Newsworthy with Steve and Jerry at gmail.com. They can also text us with our text number at area code 540-709-1318. We'd absolutely love to hear you. And as always, guys, if you can't see the light, be the light. Uh-huh.